Hello everyone, I'm Tai Xing from Fudan University. It's my great pleasure to be here and share our work. In this work, we perform an empirical study to understand the practice of security patch management across multiple stable branches in OSS projects. My speech consists of five main parts. Background, research questions, data collection process, our study results, and the conclusion. Let's start with some background information. First of all, I will introduce the multi-branch management of OSS. In recent years, OSS developers often manage multiple isolated and concurrent code branches for software development and maintenance. Different branches serve different purposes. By investigating the code repository of several popular OSS, we observe the following four types of branches. The first type is master branch. It is the main development branch for a project. The second type is stable branch. Stable branches are used to maintain the released stable versions. When a major version is officially released for users, a corresponding stable branch is created in the code repository. After that, the developers work mainly on the stable branch to maintain the corresponding major version. The third type is mirror branch. It is a copy of some released version. Unlike the stable branches, there will be no code changes on the mirror branch after it is created. The last type is temporary branch. They are created for specific tasks. After specific task completes, the temporary branch may be removed. In addition to master branch, stable branches are the most common type and they play an important role in the software maintenance process. Let's go further into the management of stable branches. As I introduced earlier, a stable branch is forked from the mainline where a major version is released. After that, developers would continuously apply bug and security related patches on the stable branches. Moreover, they would release patched versions from stable branches periodically. By this way, users of old versions can obtain the fixed versions and keep their applications protected from the disclosed vulnerabilities. In addition, developers usually need to maintain several stable branches at the same time in one project. As seen, patch management across stable branches plays an important role in protecting end users. However, patch management process consumes a huge amount of resources. They require developers to check vulnerability disclosures, develop patches, deploy patches, and test patches. Hence, stable branches may take a long time to be fixed or never be fixed. These branches expose users of old stable versions to unstable vulnerability threats. To the best of our knowledge, no measurement has been performed to explore the patch management practice across stable branches in OSS projects. Therefore, we aim to perform the first measurement to study the question in this paper. In general, we study the following four questions. First, we study the stable branch distribution, distribution and explore their characteristics in terms of maintenance time and code commits. Second, we measure the patch deployment status on stable branches. Third, we further analyze the unpatched branches, investigating the reasons for not deploying the appropriate patches and the potential security risks. At last, we also investigate the patch branches and measure the efforts and time delay during patch porting. To perform the study, we need to construct a data set. However, there are two main challenges. First, it is required to identify stable branches from the more non-stable branches in the OSS code repository. There is no automated method to do so. Second, it is required to assess the deployment status of the security patch on each affected stable branch of a vulnerability. Although there is a line of works that aim to identify bug fixing commits or security patch commits, none of them can be directly applied to meet our requirements. To address these two challenges, we paid great efforts to collect data and construct our data set. As shown in the figure, we follow three steps to construct the data set. In the first step, we collect popular OSS from GitHub and manually identify stable branches in each OSS repository. At this step, 
requests 72 OSS projects that manage at least two stable branches. In the second step, we collect disclosed vulnerabilities from NVD and locate their security patches via identifying commit-like URLs. By filtering projects with few vulnerabilities and patches, we select 26 OSS projects and 806 associated CVEs. In the third step, we devise a semi-automated method to locate the secret patches on all affected stable branches. Our method takes the patch commit identified in step 2 as reference and then locates the patch commit on each stable branch using 10 heuristic rules. Since our rules are not sound and complete, we manually verify all the results at the end. Following the three steps, we successfully construct an extensive dataset. It contains 26 popular OSS projects, 608 stable branches, 806 CVs, and 2,099 patches on the stable branches. The whole data collection process takes 340 man hours. Next, I will present the results of our study on the dataset. In total, we collect 608 stable branches in 27 OSS projects. The distribution of stable branches is shown in the figure on the right. It is obvious that the distribution of the number of stable branches is uneven. The HHVM owns over 100 stable branches, while some OSS projects such as Victory CMS have less than 10 stable branches. We also investigate the submitted commits on stable branches and their maintenance duration. As shown in the figure, most software maintains stable branches for a long time. In 20 of them, each stable branch is maintained for more than one year on average. Well, there are three OSS projects that maintain stable branches for less than three months. In a word, maintaining multiple stable branches is a common practice adopted in OSS projects. However, the practice of managing these stable branches differs significantly among these projects in various ways, such as branch count, maintenance period, maintenance frequency, and so on. In the next part, we measure the patch deployment status on all affected stable branches. During the dataset construction, we have labeled all the affected stable branches and the security patches on them. Thus, we can easily determine whether a CV is patched on a branch for a CV branch pair. The overall results are shown in the table. From this table, we observe that the proportion of unpatched CV branch pairs is high regardless of the programming language. More than 8% CV branch pairs are unpatched. Our results show the patch deploy deployment status on stable branches is worrisome. We further analyze the patch deployment status from the perspective of per CV branch and OSS project. Specifically, we propose three new metrics. CV patch ratio measures how well a CV is fixed on all affected branches. Branch patch ratio measures how well a stable branch is maintained. OSS patch ratio measures the overall status of patch management on all the stable branches in one OSS project. The results of CV patch ratio are shown in the top left. 36% of CVs have a CV patch ratio higher than 0.9 which means they are properly fixed in affected stable branches. Meanwhile, 57% CVs have a CV patch ratio lower than 0.5, which means they are not well fixed. The results of branch patch ratio are shown in the top right. 74% stable branches have a branch ratio lower than 0.5. It clearly shows that the patch management among most stable branches is far from good. At last, the results of OSS patch ratio are shown in the bottom left. The OSS patch ratio varies significantly from software to software. MongoDB and Wireshark have an OSS patch ratio close to 1, and 3 has an OSS patch ratio over 0.8. However, 
However, the OSS patch ratio for the remaining 23 projects are all below 0.6. In the next part, we intend to uncover why some branches are not patched and what security threats are posed to users. First of all, we investigate all the CV branch pairs that have not been patched and conclude two primary reasons. The first reason is auto maintenance branch. Though the stable branch is vulnerable to the CV, the branch is auto maintenance when the vulnerability is disclosed. Thus, the branch is not patched. The second reason is patch management failure. The stable branch is vulnerable to the CV and is still maintained as a vulnerability disclosure. However, the corresponding patch is not applied to the stable branch due to poor man patch management. We distinguish the two situations by analyzing the branch maintenance time and the vulnerability disclosure time. It turns out that about 90% unpatched CV branch pairs are caused by auto maintenance patch. The remaining 10% unpatched CV branch pairs are caused by failures in patch management. We further analyze the scope of these cases from the perspectives of involved CVs, branches, and OSS projects. The results are presented in the table. It turns out that patch management failures occur in 80% of software. Since users prefer to fetch OSS projects from stable branches that are still under maintenance, patch management failures on stable branches are more likely to expose users to security threats. Thus, you assess the potential risks of the not fully patched CVs due to patch management failures. It turns out that these vulnerabilities cover a wide range of types. 47% of them have a CVS score of over 7. What's worse, 20% of them have public available POC. This means that the attackers can attack applications that are built upon these unpatched stable branches at a low cost. At last, we conduct another study to understand the patch porting process across stable branches. We calculate the patch porting delay of a vulnerability as the delta between the commit date of the first patch and that of the last ported patch. The figure presents the patch porting delays for vulnerabilities in different languages. We find that patch porting takes less than 4 days for PHP and Python, while more than 37 days in C and C++. We guess that Python and PHP developers take a more proactive attitude and more actions on patching vulnerabilities. However, for 23% of CVEs, it takes more than 30 days to complete the patch porting on stable branches. Such long time delay greatly increases the pos possibility of being attacked. During the patch porting, sometimes the patch cannot be directly applied on the target branch. In such situations, developers need to adjust the, ori the original patch a little. To understand the efforts that developers might put in porting patches, we compare the code between the original patch and the ported ones. We find that 83% 80, ported patches are different from the original patches, involving 1,396 ported patches. We further manually investigate what kinds of code modification should, be, should the developers make during patch porting. By reviewing all the ported patches, we find there are four types of code changes. Adjust patch positions, fit code context, change fixed logic, and any relevant changes. As shown in the table on the right, the first and fourth types of code changes are the most prevalent. Both the second and third types account for no more than 10%. However, they are more technically challenging for patch porting. In conclusion, we conduct a large-scale empirical study of security patch management practice across multiple stable branches in OSS projects. In the study, we uncover the poor patch management status in OSS projects and obtain many useful findings. Based on our study, we call for the OSS community to improve the current security patch management practice. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.
Thanks very much for a, another very interesting presentation on a, a very relevant topic of, of updating software and applying patches. So we have uh, at least one of the authors here for, for Q&A and we have a few minutes for, for questions. Are there any questions for the authors? I have one to get started. On the, uh, the last recommendation, the recommendations to the open source community, one of them was, was about um, improving the processes of, of applying patches. Um, and there was a, a mention of perhaps um, tools to detect if patches have been applied. Can you say anything further about um, what sort of tools or automation might be particularly useful here? If any of the yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, uh, one kind of important uh, tool that uh, the OSS community can leverage is uh, automated uh, uh, patchback porting tools. Uh, I noticed that uh, recently some researchers have proposed some very good tools to help uh, uh, developers uh, automatically backport some patches on Linux kernel or some web applications. I think uh, uh, the, the OSS community and uh, other developers can try to use these tools. It will greatly uh, help uh, the developers reduce their efforts in uh, patch backporting and uh, patch de deployment. Right, so, so that's a tool more about um, uh, applying the patch to previous stable branches. But what, what do you think about um, simply detecting? Is, it, um, is there any uh, scope for tools to just help detect that the particular branch needs to, to have a patch point. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, my connection is unstable. Can you uh, repeat again? Sure. So, so my question is, um, do you think that there's a need for tools to simply alert developers to say this particular branch might uh, might require a patch, and then they could use other tools to to implement the patch? But do do you think that there's a need for those initial detection tools? Yeah, mm, that is a, a good question because I uh, we we noticed that uh, do, do, during our measurements, uh, we noticed that. Uh, uh, actually, actually, it is hard to distinguish whether a branch is affected by a specific vulnerability. So the developers uh, cannot uh, decide to decide that uh, uh, which branch are necessary to be patched. Uh, I also noticed that there are some tools that can help uh, developers uh, determine the affected scope of some vulnerability, but. Uh, uh, I think uh, the tools are not uh, very good in practice. So the developers mainly um, check whether the branch is uh, uh, vulnerable manually. And uh, I think that's not a good practice, but, but that actually that is a good tool to do that. So I think uh, uh, the security researchers might uh, uh, take more efforts to develop, develop such kinds of tools. 